In this video, I'll break down how executives, managers, and operators are all using Agentic AI in different ways and dive into kind of the differences between them as well as how they all work together and what it's going to look like as the systems push humans up the value chain and start to redefine kind of our roles within our organizations and you know, even deeper, our business processes. All right, let's hop in. Agenda AI for executives, managers, and operators. So each role has a part to play, obviously. And Agenda AI for executives is mostly around vision, strategy, and synthesis, which honestly, if you ask like, what, are, what do executives do today anyway, it's like a very similar thing. Um, but here's what I mean. So executives are, will leverage Agenda AI as a force multiplier, right? Strategic synthesis, obviously digesting massive amounts of data around the company, mapping out trends, doing kind of like internal metrics, right? Maybe some external research to kind of like enrich the internal data perhaps, but really just giving them better data, a bigger picture, more clarity and insight into what's going on in the business, right? The data so they can make better decisions, right? Uh, leverage, one of the biggest pieces, probably the biggest piece, right? So rather than competing in the human labor market for A players, they can execute their vision basically at scale or at a much larger scale than before for a fraction of the cost using these systems, right? So like if you wanna run a certain marketing campaign or you wanna test a product or whatever, and you have a certain playbook to kind of do that, those things, which is like reach out to these people, you know, try to convert X amount to this, get them on for free, have touch points here, here, and there, here as they're working on the product. You know, you have a certain kind of playbook whenever you want to kind of test a new product or a feature or whatever, right? Uh, rather than finding, you know, a product manager and like a developer and then like a customer support person or orchestrating a team around that motion, these systems will be able to do that, right? And do it automatically. So your focus is really just ideating and creating to a certain extent, the product itself, right? Uh, and then the actual scale, that leverage comes through using the system. Uh, and then focus. So like, obviously it gives you time back though. Like the huge thing with, with these systems is it takes a lot of things off your plate and people are concerned it's going to take all 40 hours of their work week off their plate. Right. So like, obviously this is like a big time savings kind of play or leverage point AI at least. Um, and so the same thing is obviously going to apply for executives, right? Like they get more time in their day to work on creative strategic work, maybe go build more relationships. I think that's going to be a huge, huge thing. It already happens. Right. But I think even more it'll happen. Um, and the funny thing is, is executives at the highest level essentially have agentic systems working on their behalf already. Right. They just have like human orgs, massive hu human orgs that can execute things for them. Uh, but uh, smaller guys obviously don't have that much leverage, right? Agentic AI gives us that leverage. Um, and the larger guys, you know, all, like they're going to end up just basically translating what the human org is currently doing into Agentic. And who knows what, what that transition looks like. I mean, I have some ideas, but we'll see, right? It's happening live. Agentic AI for managers. So these are the folks who under, usually they're the ones who have the operational knowledge in the business. And if things aren't documented or SOP'd uh, consistently, then you're usually looking at like a few, a handful of managers or like one manager who kind of has been with the business for a while, understands everything like the back of their hand. And if they were to ever leave, the whole business is like scrambling for six months, right? So like managers a lot of times have a really good operational knowledge. They usually were internally I'm not, let me not say usually it's a coin flip, whether or not they were internally promoted to be a manager, right? They were kind of someone who was executing business workflows, right? And now they're kind of managing teams and workflows. Um, sometimes that does come from external when you need like certain experience that's not internal, but anyway, operational knowledge, KPI alignment and playbook creation, right? And I'll get into playbooks here in a second. So managers, uh, in, in my last video, I talked about like the business model for agent AI, right? Being performance based. So the actual, uh, KPIs associated with that performance are really, really, really important. And the managers kind of s can set that essentially, right? Like executive sets the vision managers set kind of like the plan, the KPIs that need to get hit to reach that vision, right? Within their specific vertical. Uh, and then we'll get into the next one later, but 
Managers are responsible for the performance of the system, high level, right? So SOP creation. Managers use their operational knowledge to create standardized operating procedures that become guardrails for the agentic system. So these are things like your policies, right? What what your your, your uh, if we're talking to a client during like a upsell uh, motion, what what are the steps there? How many follow ups do we like to send? Uh, who do we bring in during that that kind of like motion, right? Like when do we kind of give up on it? When do we uh, offer, you know, a refund when the feedback is bad, what do we do? Right? Like, so you have a certain SOP on how you handle, you know, that part of the customer journey, like the agentic system needs to know that. Right. And the managers are usually the ones who are creating these SOPs and then playbooks. So playbooks are similar to training an employee where it's like, okay, you know, new employee, you came in and on the job description for the application, we had roles and responsibilities and there was like a list of 20 bullet points of things to do, right? Uh, cool, you applied, now you're in. Here's like the internal list of things that you are responsible for. And then here's the training series teaching you how to do each of those things, right? That's usually kind of what exists in organizations today. Uh, and it's a similar kind of thing with the agents, right? We need kind of, you know, let's say that we had uh a list of the roles and responsibilities for like an operations agent and, or, or a, a client success agent. Right. And one of the things was, um, review all the client feedback and put together a report on like sentiment and identify any like negative trends operationally and, uh, pull out like upsell opportunities, clients who are, who are primed for upsell, something like that. And it's like, okay, cool. Um, how do I know what, what somebody, like when somebody's primed for an upsell, where do I go to find the feedback? Like all of these kind of things that someone would need to know the context, uh, you need to give that instruction to them via the playbook and the SOP, right? There's kind of a combo of the two where the SOP defines a lot of things, like at least the guardrails and the playbook is the, the play that you're running inside of, like it's the book of plays that you're running inside of the, the guardrails, right? Like if it's football field, the boundaries and the rules of the game are the SOPs and the players playing the game are the agents and the plays that they're running are the playbooks, right? Uh, and then improvement and optimization. So obviously these systems are going to be judged based on their ability to meet certain KPIs. If they're not meeting KPIs, like how do you improve that over time, right? Do you have to juice up the SOP? Do you have to change the playbook a little bit or some of the plays in the playbook, right? Um, you know, it's the manager's job to like review the results, the performance, and then optimize just like it is with humans today. Right. So not much will change except we're managing agentic systems rather than humans. We'll see if we manage humans, right? Cause now we're talking about operators. So by operators, I'm really just talking about like executives, managers, operators, right? Individual contributors. They're going to be responsible for data hygiene human in the loop and quality control data hygiene and quality control are somewhat of the same and human in the loop can also then diagram with quality control as well. It depends how you think about it. So operators ensure there's always high quality data in and data out. So obviously the health of these systems is purely based on the quality and likely the volume of the data. And, you know, we obviously have set the guardrails. We set the playbooks, like things are set, but these are LLMs, right? It's a black box. Like things can happen, whatever. It might need help in some areas. It might need human discretion in some areas, right? So there are certain, there are a lot of points where the agent might be working and it needs to escalate to a human and the operator takes care of that. Or there's a, a piece of data that is unlabeled and, uh, you know, the operator comes in and kind of like relabels that data for it or helps it kind of understand or adds a, a piece of knowledge to it when there's a clarifying question as it's working to a workflow. Uh, you know, it, it's that human kind of backstop to ensure that whatever's going into kind of the centralized master database, agentic database is high quality data. So that way when the agents are operating off of that data, they're doing it appropriately, right? They're not operating and outputting garbage essentially, right? So data quality Oper operators maintain correct and enrich data pipelines that are feeding the system, right? Um, and it's mostly on that kind of final, like, hey, you know, is this person a client? Or John, we have 50 Johns 
which John are they referring to? You know, something like that. Uh, human in the loop, like I said, escalates to human when needed. And then continuous feedback. So this is where we get kind of like the human uh, reinforcement learning at times where it's just like, obviously, this is also where operators and managers talk where it's like, hey, this thing is like not working appropriately. I think it's because it was off here, here, and here. Okay, let me update the SOP or let me update the playbook or whatever is what the manager would say. Operator would be like, hey, I, I'm flagging these issues. You know, manager fixes it, right? So we'll see exactly how it all breaks out eventually, but not much is going to change uh, except for like literally the skill set involved in like working. It's like we had to learn how to, how to, you know, the skill set of working with SaaS platforms, right? Like each platform you get, there's some kind of learning curve involved. Uh, and luckily there's been kind of a meet in the middle point where like, there's clearly like a base kind of SAS design where you have the menu item on the left and then the main kind of view, you know, taking up a, I would say four fifths of the screen usually. And so like now, if you're spinning up a SAS product, that's kind of like what you do. And people kind of understand that structure of software, like user interface when they get into it. But a lot of times, like if you're in Palantir or even like HubSpot uh, there's a huge learning curve involved. And so like the skill becomes, you know, this platform and you know how to like use it. Um, I think those skills are going to be thrown out the window uh, and different skills will have to emerge, right? I think data science is going to be really, really important. So executives design the why and the where, so the strategy. Managers develop the how, the process, and operators ensure the what, so the output. We, it ensures that there's good output by making sure the data in, the input is quality and that the output aligns with the guardrails, right? It's the final check or it's the one executing the output and the agents just kind of like lobbing it up for them to, to flush it basically. And all three layers feed and reinforce each other, right? Just like they do with, with normal organizations today. So the bottom line is that Gentic AI isn't replacing humans. It's pushing us up the value stack and redefining our roles and our responsibilities, right? In a previous video, I talked about how humans become data creators. This is what I'm talking about, is maintaining kind of the quality, the sovereignty of the data at the highest level, creating kind of like, what it, what is our data? What's our edge? What's our advantage? What's our value prop? Like, who are we, right? What's our product? Developing the product, the service, right? Understanding the market, whatever. Managers are defining how to execute on all of this right? And operators are keeping it in line, essentially. So now that we have systems that can execute many, many things for us, a lot of this stuff is possible, essentially, right? And then, you know, I get, I get how you could start to spiral and think like, okay, well, like, if an LLM is just intelligence, then why do I need an operator? Why do I need uh, a manager? Why would I need an executive at a certain point? Um, and I get that mindset. But we're not there yet, right? We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Right now, though, humans are still needed to kind of give these things a purpose and then keep them aligned. That's it.